Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Eldritch Extras. How are you doing? Hello. Mike? I'm fine, Paul. How are you? I'm very good. That's great. That's great. And yes. uh, this is uh, one of our um, extras you're listening to or watching. Indeed, indeed. So, what's on that? What's on the menu today? Well, I think you know we like to talk about a range of subjects of uh, of interest, and uh, I think you mentioned uh, the other day about um, in terms of gaming things have to do with the uh, using you know, games master screens. Obviously. So, uh, you know, maybe we could talk about that for a bit, and yeah. uh, and we've been watching stuff. So maybe there's some uh, something we've watched recently that uh, we can. Uh, get into well most think? certainly i've taken to but succumbing to the evil algorithm that netflix throws at me at the well, top of the screen it says you might like this and in previous years i'd have said no you don't know what i like but actually it seems like it does know what i like because i go and watch that stuff and i think oh this is pretty good <laughs> it knows you too well now. Yeah, it will. It will be. It will soon be selecting what you eat and drink as well. But uh, it'll probably but I... do a better job than I do because often, <laughs> if I go to a restaurant, you have it. You have witnessed this. We all go to the restaurant. I was with at the restaurant in with Chaosium Con. With I think there was five of us at the table. You four, the other four, not me, all ordered the same thing. I didn't really clock this. And your food looked great. It I was. ordered, apparently, I ordered a massive bucket of weird, greasy slop, which was not good at all. Why did I? Why didn't I order what you ordered? I, I'm I, the I worst person at picking what I should eat. Yeah, you, you are, because this is not just the one instance. So this has happened not. multiple times yes. in, in, uh, uh, that uh, you seem to yeah. kind of get it in your head that. Uh, that this thing on the menu is going to be great. And we all look at it and go like, it's not. Yeah. It, you should not do that. I'll, but you... I'll try not to swear. But, uh, yeah, you look at it, what the hell is that? What? what? Every time. I hate menus. Every, because Too much especially choice. if it's a long menu. What? Too much choice. You, Too you much need, choice. You need, you need the, the rigor of a, a set menu where yeah. you, you, know, you get what you're given. Yeah, and uh, uh, and, you, know, you, you know, choice is not you know something you, you what, need to entertain. It's not. Yeah, it's. I get what you are. I just, I just like what what are you ordering. I'll have that. <laughs> Usually, that's better. I'm I'm ordering extra hot wings. That's what uh, no. I'm ordering. <laughs> I've experienced that too. I nearly died. <laughs> I, I manfully kept going. I don't know why I did that. Yeah, and then so I cried. Good. Yes, yes, it was a sight to behold. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Anyway, anyway, yes. I mean, we you know we could talk about you know more about. Uh, well, I, I cooking, think the- cook, cooking with Bill, but um, we, we <laughs> mentioned that last time. I think so. We did, but it's not so much that. I think I think the lesson here is that sometimes people aren't the best choice of what's good for them. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's one might say there's a slippery slope somewhere in that statement but uh, that's, is there? uh <laughs> yeah uh that, that's why a dictatorship is better than democracy well clearly I'm not, yeah. that's not true that's not true <laughs> just getting a little political there yeah but, yeah no okay fine well um let's let's move into uh, an even more you know serious topic than yeah, politics and controversial and controversial and um, actually politics and uh, let's let's talk about gm screens oh okay what yeah. did you think i was going to say i thought you were going <laughs> to talk about the netflix programs that we started oh, discussing oh oh well no, that, we're saving that gem for a little bit you know, okay, for, okay afterwards i, I yeah. think all right okay. well i was listening to our friends the the grognard files dirk and blithy and they were in uh the Lassagari again, I think, in the in the local pub. <clears throat> and as always, I love the shows that are in the pub because that's always the best. And this time they had somebody actually, you know, sit on the table near them and chat to them, which was added uh you know, bonus I, I, material. I think that's always best when you know strangers come into podcasts and just like, What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's great. Well, it's something happens like, in the background. Real life, real life happens. I lo- yeah. Because I love that. 
you're listening to a podcast and then something happens or there's something outside or you get a, a bit of the environment and you actually feel like you're there otherwise they're just disembodied voices uh, well no absolutely yeah it kind of gives it a sense of place doesn't it but uh we probably should mention the name of dirk and Blythe's podcast just in case people aren't familiar with it yeah the grognard files they look at games from back in the day and games of today i mean i don't have to get their strap line exactly correct i'm not one of the hosts you're, but, you're not one of them yeah that's right um, but, uh, yeah it's worth a listen if you've uh if you've not uh, heard of it before it's uh if you're into games that is if you're not into games it may not be your thing but uh but yeah definitely a, a great show so dirk was talking about how he had then this was a show previous to expo uh 2023 i think it came out may 2023 for context and towards the end of the show they were taking listener questions and one of the questions was about using gm screens which is you know something of a controversial topic among role players who tend to take all these things perhaps more seriously than they should i don't know i mean we're here talking about it now so maybe we're taking it seriously too uh, but dirk was putting forth the the uh, statement that he'd been in a game previously at a con and somebody had bought a GM screen along with them. They were the GM, but they hadn't put it up as a screen. They just had it for reference in front of them, folded on the table. And Dirk was saying he was unsure about his own use of a GM screen following that because, you know, was it, was he, was he erecting the screen? in some sort of uh what did he say how did he compare it to um uh, uh, uh what's the film uh the wizard of oz you know was wizard it like of oz, the, the, seeing the, behind the, the great curtain the, the curtain and seeing the, the wizard's workings pulling his levers yeah yeah and i thought blithy who is is like a hidden gem because he's not the 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 star of the show so much but he's the he's, he's oh, like, wow. always a, a grounding <laughs> oh, oh. force a grounding force, but I think a star in his own right. Let's oh, be fair. most certainly. But he's always very ground. I mean, they're both very grounded. But but Dirk, partic- uh, but Blythe particularly, and and uh, I think his response was something to the to the point of uh, Wizard of Oz. No, it's it's just it's just a bit of cardboard with some tables on it. Don't make Brilliant. it into a psychodrama. Brilliant. Brilliant. And it literally is. It's just that. It's just a bit of cardboard with some tables on it that you use to hide your notes. I'm looking forward to the time when, you know, I arrive to a game um, and I'm maybe just one of the players mm. and the, uh, the the keeper or the GM, you know, gets out their screen, puts it on, and then all the players put out their screens as well. And oh. then we've all got, all got screens. Player so screens. Got player screens, you know, and uh, we all have our own little little world hidden away where we can write our secret notes to one another, roll our dice. Yeah. You know, roll our dice secretly so the, the GM can't see them because it's only fair if they're well, doing I, it. Why can't like, we do it? So, so uh, a rod no one. Yeah, well, fair enough. You know, oh, another one. Oh, oh. <laughs> what do you mean you don't? Well, trust what, me? are the, what are the chances? But brilliant. I mean, I've seen people roll a hundred followed by a hundred at a gaming table, so it can happen. So you know, fair play. yeah. But yeah, um, yeah you, I mean. I, I, I when when I run a game, if it's a con game, uh, I tend to take my keeper screen with me. Uh, mainly, I, 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 I very rarely consult it because I mainly know what's on it. But but it is there as a bit of a, a, a crutch in case I forget something or I want to check something that I don't that doesn't come up very often, and so I have it there. But I. I very rarely, if ever, I don't think I ever actually use it as a screen anymore. I I do what the guy in Dirk's game did. I, I kind of just have it near me somewhere, folded up, um, and that's where it stays. I normally never touch it. Um, um, and I'm, I'm trying to remember the last time I used one. I, I I tend to, yeah, I don't like, I don't like the artificial barrier necessarily, but I have, I do, I have used it like like that sometimes if it's um i don't know sometimes i do want to keep my role secret for some reason if if it kind of works with the scenario um maybe maybe that that you know i think i tell you the last time i used it it was when i was running masks 
because I had so many bits of paper, handouts and notes. I had my kind of campaign diary, which is the way I kind of take notes when I'm running a campaign. Um, and I've got all my handouts stacked up in order of kind of the way, the order I think I'm going to be giving them out. And obviously, if I didn't have a screen, I, I can't really have them on the table in the way I'm after to have them face down and I don't want to get into a faff. And so it just keeps that information private until I give it out because I've got so much to kind of manage. It just gives me a clear area. I haven't got to worry about the player, the players inadvertently seeing some secret. Um, so I, I, you know, I've used um, screens in, you know, in that manner, you know, numerous times. But if it's just a kind of a one shot, um, that kind of con style game, I don't tend to use it as a as a screen. I mean, I can't, to be honest, Paul, I, I can't remember if I've ever seen you use a screen in any game, to be honest. Oh, I guess you're not in my con games very much because I do tend to use the screen now. Right. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I quite like the screen. So you, is that because you can't remember the rules or what's Yeah, I have no yeah. idea what the rules are, so I have to... Make have it up as you go. Okay, so there are a bunch of things the screen does, and uh, there are pros and cons, I think, to a screen, aren't there? I yeah. think the pros are you've got all the, the stuff there on the table. If you're not familiar, well, if you need reference to the rules, it's there. I do sometimes, like, maybe reference to a, a, I don't know, the Bounce of Sanity chart and something about the bandless chart something like that um other than that the screen is really the function for me is that i can put all my stuff behind it you know the notes the handouts the <clears throat> uh, my phone with the time on whatever you know i can have that all behind the screen because i don't really want to if i'm it particularly if it's a fairly tight table and people are sat near me if i if i was in that position as a player i'm not going to want to keep purposefully not looking at the gm's notes because i don't yeah. want to see what they've got written down yeah. um so it kind of cuts that out i think it can be a place to hide your dice rolls but contrary to that if i'm rolling the dice i stand up and reach over the gm screen and roll the dice on the table in front of the player so i'm kind of making more of a statement of doing that yeah i agree um, i i mean that's what i do and uh, you know, I, I do tend to roll in the open because it's more fun. Also, the screen has got art on it. <laughs> I like stuff that looks good at the table. I like handouts. I like miniatures. We don't tend to use them in Call of Cthulhu, but in you know, when I play D anD D, we use miniatures. I like miniatures. I like maps. I like anything kind of art, handcraft, anything like that that's at the table. Great. Uh, I think that's great, uh, and and the the screen is yet another piece of an artifact of that 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 shows off color and art and so on, and I think all of that is is very welcome. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, a screen is just another play aid, and obviously, play aids can be very helpful, um, and so that's why I I always have one with me. You know, it's not I don't necessarily always put it out, but I've just been thinking while you've been saying saying that. I tell you when I don't, I tell you the reason I don't tend to use a screen for con games is because, um, a lot of the times I'm running a con game for people who have never played Call of Cthulhu or even a role playing game before. I have, that's what I've certainly been doing in the last 12 months. The kind of games that I've just happened to be running have been the players have happened to be new to the game. Right. And so I, I, I maybe I, it wasn't a conscious thought, but unconsciously, I didn't want a barrier and I didn't want them to kind of, I don't know. I just wanted it to be open and to be really accessible. Um, and so having the screen, you kind of, if you wanted to kind of often when you're dealing with a bunch of new players and you ask them for something that they need to look on the couch sheet for, they don't know where it is. So just kind of pointing across and kind of just tapping on the sheet. It's, it's there or, you know, in that area, it's a helps to kind of move the game along and, yeah, so they're not stood there five minutes trying to work out what's on the sheet. And so the screen is a bit of a barrier that because you kind of have to reach over and it's in the way. So I just tend to keep a clear table. Um, mm. And that's what I think is why, um, you know, I started to kind of not use it, you know, in, in, in particularly for those style of games. I think this is like a technical issue, but it is an important issue. 
landscape or portrait format because it needs to be low it needs to be you know a4 it need, it needs the screen doesn't want to be that way up it wants to be that way up so it's only that high you know landscape. that high and yes. then it's I, yeah it's here and i can see over it you know that'll be the top of it if i'm talking to you and it's not really a barrier you know i don't want it like this no, I mean, I've, 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 it, 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 in my uh, in my history of gaming, I've certainly played systems that have used both styles of landscape and portrait. But I, I agree, a landscape is far better. It's you know, it's not so high. But it does remind me of a time I was playing D and D, uh, and the 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 GM or uh, no, I think it was just one of the players. One of the players happened to work at a printing works and decided they would make a custom screen for the for the gm as a bit of a you know, nice yeah. thing and, and they bought this screen in. and if you can imagine a screen that was double double the height of a portrait you know a4 us letter That's so like a normal high so, so like a normal yeah a normal screen you know portraits like that yeah this, this was like that <laughs> four, four panels long i mean literally what? you couldn't you couldn't see it unless you're a giant you know it's brilliant i mean we what? just all you need is like a little graphic. window cut in it so you yeah. can just look through at the players and, and a, a little fact, slot a slot below that where you can just dispense handouts so they oh, never see you electric. you're just like this disembodied voice this is what we need is this comes back to the wizard of oz right so next time I'm just going, you know, like the where they screen off hospital beds with the curtains. Yeah, I'm just going to bring one of those around and and just bring it round, and and I'll have a little mic not microphone here, a little speaker on the table, and I'll just just speak to them through that. Um, that yeah, that would be perfect. And and like you said, just have a little maybe like a, one of those grabbers. I'll just reach over the screen with the handout and just drop it on the table, so they yeah. never see me, and they don't. You know, they'll, they'll yeah. think I'm like the Wizard of Oz. I think that that's possibly the <laughs> that's possibly the direction we need to go in. Yeah. Is that too far? Uh, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, GM screens. I think, as with most advice for role playing games, if we're even offering advice, just do what you want. I mean, it's do just, what you like. If you do, like do, them, do, use yeah. them. If you like, don't, any, you probably don't bother. Any play aid, use what works for you. And don't use what doesn't work for you. It's as and also, as it's just another thing. Have a chat with the group. Do you like me using a GM screen, or do you feel it's a bit of a barrier, or you know, do, do you prefer it when I don't? Because I kind of like it. Because you know, for the reasons I've stated. But if people are like, no, I don't like that. Well, don't use it then. Well, I mean, there's your answer, I guess. You know, what can, what more can we say about screens? I mean, you know, good artwork useful information put it up put it by you doesn't matter i'm gonna come back to the uh oh actually there was another oh. thing they talked about oh, no way no 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 they, let's they... we'll save that for another time there was another gem that that dirk talked about but uh we'll save that for a future <laughs> episode oh that's a treat to come then uh we got to get back to the to the netflix netflix yeah. netflix right well yeah, I I only watched it because I didn't know it was on there because I I take little heed on what Netflix suggests I should it's be watching. going wrong. You know, it's clearly clearly where I'm going wrong. Uh, so you suggested this to me, and um, and so I watched it, and uh, and for once, you know, you gave me a good suggestion. So uh, it was quite, <laughs> you know, I was quite I was quite enjoying it. So it's usually uh, we, you recommending things to me because uh, yeah, yeah, you, know, you spend all day sit on your ass watching telly. So I, I do nothing else. That's all I do <laughs> all, all the time. Um, so we watched um, this three part documentary. I think it's just called Arnold, isn't it? I think it's just called Arnold, as in on Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, and yeah, it was it was it was fascinating, and well, I you know I certainly recommend giving it a watch, particularly if you have any interest in the Arnold. Um, but it's uh, it's a three parter, and um, and the first part is all about his bodybuilding career. Then the second part moves into his you know movie career, and then the third part is when he uh, moves into politics, mm. and um, and so you know his book ended in that fashion. Um, um, 
And when you've kind of watched it all, it, it, it's remarkable thinking about this chap who has done so successfully well in three quite different arenas of life in terms of career and how well he has done. And, mm. uh, you, I, you know, you don't, I tend to think of Arnold as a, you know, a film guy who used to be a bodybuilder. Um, and that's kind of my perception of him. And it's not until I kind of watched all the documentary to kind of really for the penny to sink in about how accomplished he was in both, in, in all three of those arenas, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Um, <clears throat> the fact that he was born in Austria prevents him from ever becoming the president of the USA. But you kind of wonder, you know, given the people that have become president of the USA, you kind of wonder, well, if he had been an American citizen, would he have made it to that level? And I'm not saying he should have done, but I'm just putting forward the question, could he have done? And and it seems quite possible. I don't know if you remember the film Universal Soldier with Sylvester Stallone. Yes, yes. And he's 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 so still Sly Stallone's been uh cryogenically frozen and then woken up, I don't know, like the middle of probably the twenty first century. I, I can't remember what the date is. Isn't it Dolph Lundgren? Not Sly Stallone. Dolph Lundgren, isn't it? Oh, is it? Are we I think have, I'm, well, you know, how, somebody, how much are we betting on this? Somebody's going to have to have a Wikipedia off on this. Well, one. I'm I'm doing it right now. This is yeah, right. this is. Well, it's like you rolling dice behind a screen. I don't know whether you're telling me the truth or not. You know. Yeah, I'm just going to make up something now um, <laughs> about Universal Soldier. It came out in 1992, and it starred. Yep, just like I said, John Claude Van Damme. <laughs> so we're we're both, we're both uh, our film our film knowledge is uh, is thereby defined how good we are at remembering. Yeah, this. but the thing is, I'm editing this, so uh, I, I can make oh, myself clearly you sound can like drop, a new drop in a completely different sounding voice. <laughs> so it's Jean Claude Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren, and uh, oh, so I was of... right. It was he was in it. Well, you say you were right, yeah, but yeah, he's not yeah, first yeah. on the list. Wow. Well, so okay, anyway, <laughs> he's. Uh, He's driving past, he's getting a, a lift in a taxi and they're going past the White House. And I think he says to the ta- no, the taxi driver's talking about um, the past and he refers to Arnold Schwarzenegger being president. And uh, he's like, you mean the actor? And the taxi driver's like, oh, you know, I think he was an actor when he was young. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that, that that's not Demolition Man? Oh, is it Demolition Man? Which is what? Which is why you're thinking Sylvester Stallone. I've got the wrong. Fi- you- oh, you got the wrong should- person. The wrong film. <laughs> no, I've got the right person in the wrong film. Haven't Brilliant. I? This Brilliant. This is this is podcast. This is gold. Th- this is gold. It shows how much I-, I like the level of research you've done pre-show to you know make sure you're not talking rubbish. So it's 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 brilliant. Yeah, well done that. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's Demolition Man. Yeah, and Wesley Snipes, I think, if I recall Where, correctly, and Sandra yeah. Bullock. Yeah, that's right. You've got directed that right. by uh, yeah. Marco Brambilla. <laughs> yeah, you're not reading that at all, are you? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not reading really that. Just straight off the straight out of the memory. That one, brilliant, brilliant. I didn't think yeah. I needed to check it up because I thought I remembered it correctly. But that's you know that's. Yeah. If That's only the root of the problem. If only the entirety of human history was based on people just remembering things and not checking. Yeah. <laughs> but what is it with people who can do that? I don't know. Yeah. I don't um, know. So, so what, what, what did you think? To which Was there a particular uh, episode or part of his life that you found most interesting out of the three? Or I don't think there was. I think all three were equally interesting. I mean, I knew more well i'm gonna say i knew more about one than the other i knew i'd seen his well what i thought was his first film pumping iron is it called pump and uh, now i'm questioning everything is it called pumping yeah, pump, iron? Pump, pumping right. iron i saw but, that, that back that, in that, that wasn't his first film of course no was it was that was pre-conan so i saw that back in the 80s uh yeah at home in the 80s at my parents house um Somehow that was on TV, I guess, because it was the time that Conan and things like that were out, and, and they showed that. So I knew about his bodybuilding background, but it was—I didn't know the the details of it and how it 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 come to it. Um, 
and that that was an interesting path but following that path and the story you kind of think he gets to that level he's you know i don't know mr world mr universe like i don't know a bunch of times and you think well for most people who do that that's probably it they, they probably get involved in sponsorship and advertising and so on but but that's other people using them as their resource but for him it was like well i've done that now what else can i do and i don't think many people have a, a massively successful career and then move on to another one in a different field and, and moving into acting so his, his first attempts at acting as he said as as they show on the show well, weren't great yeah yeah i mean he's he had uh, quite a i mean he still has an accent doesn't he but it was pronounceably thicker you know before and uh there was comments about he was talking i think they talk about in the documentary about people just can't understand what you're saying that kind of thing so but it, but again he takes that all inside doesn't he? he takes that all in and then works on it to kind of you know acting lessons and and all the rest of it to hone hone his craft just like you know with bodybuilding and so forth he's exceptionally single-minded and driven i think and not averse to hard work nobody could question that yeah there's absolutely. something that needs work he's going to work at it it seems um and absolutely. he needed that in his acting and one can debate you know the pros and cons of his acting um you can't debate the number of tickets the number of uh film tickets he sold no and he kind of climbed to the, the pinnacle of that um in terms of success in in movies and being a, a movie star i mean a list right yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, top of, top of his game, definitely. And uh, and it's not just, you know, he was a successful actor. I mean, he, he did make some great films that certainly I grew up with. And, um, and um, you know, I, I think as some some of the best films I've ever seen. Yeah, in terms of, so what's, what's you know, the, yeah, good films. What are the best ones, Mike? Well, I mean, you know, obviously Conan is great, but it's not, I don't think that's, his best film in a sense of what I enjoyed the most personally. I mean, for me, um, things like Predator and Terminator, Terminator 2 particularly, I think those are standout films in terms of my, you know, film education growing up. They they were the ones that I remember going to see and being affected by in terms of, you know, really enjoying and, and uh, ones I would happily, you know, watch again and again, I guess. Uh, but I'll tell you one that, that caught me off guard that um, I went to, I remember going to see Kindergar kind, Kindergarten mm. Cop and um, not really expecting anything really. I, I, you know, I wasn't, I was never a big, you know, I wasn't an Arnie fan in, in that sense. Um, it was just the latest film and we happened to, uh, let's go to cinema and uh, went to see that. And really, really enjoyed it. And it, and it, and it was like, because I was expecting it to be, you know, pretty bad. You know, this is an mm. action star who's, you know, good doing that. But, you know, here's a kind of comedy. I'm not really sure how this is going to work. And uh, I thought he was great in it. I actually came away really impressed by him. Uh, so that 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 kind of um, sticks in my memory. What about you? Probably First Blood. <laughs> <laughs> He was so good in that. <laughs> yeah. like... did, when did he do that one as a, a follow up to Deliverance? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> no, I mean, I, the foundational one for me is, is going to be Conan. Um, I, I, just as a film, I don't think I'm ever going to see anything better. Really, it's. I mean, uh, it, is, it is fantastic. Yeah, and we talked about that a lot on on the Good Friends of Jackson Elias, and there was a lot of uh, disagreement. Let's say. Oh, about really? his portrayal his portrayal of uh of conan and i think it wasn't until after we'd recorded those podcasts that i was thinking it over because often i find with a podcast discussion to be honest with any discussion it's not until afterwards that i think it over and, and I, I i come to some uh i don't know new understanding for myself I think as far as Conan goes, I didn't grow up reading the Conan books or comics. Um, and that was the first exposure to Conan that I had. So to me, he was the definitive Conan. That that to me, that that portrayal of Conan is what Conan is. Um, it's not yeah. it's not Robert E. Howard's books. 
it's not anything else it's it's him in that film that's conan to me that's my Conan. yeah i mean i i get that because again he, that was my first exposure to conan so i i i'm very much like you i mean in the fact that he defined conan for me in that way but yeah, you know, I can appreciate reading Robbie Howard later that yeah, oh, yeah. Not, maybe not quite the same as what Howard describes. But what the hell? What, it doesn't matter. That, that, you you can have two things being the same that aren't equal. It, I think it's, it's you know, it, it, it's great because I, it was years afterwards that I came to read Robbie Howard's Conan stories, and it was one of those things a bit like Stephen King. That I thought, oh, this is just a bit. You know, a bit trashy. It's a bit, I don't know, pulp. It's it's not going to be very good. And then I read the Robert e. Howard stories, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Um, yeah, blown away by them. Different to the Conan film, yeah, but um, both great. I, yeah, uh, I, I actually think you know th this is a general comment from me to throw in at this point, but the whole kind of those times when people say. Oh, it's not as good as the book, or or it's it's different to the book, or the film is you know, and they have a problem that the film is not exactly like the book, or vice versa, or whatever it may be in whatever genre. Um, I just don't get it. It's like you can enjoy it twice. You can yeah. enjoy different flavors and take some things and enjoy both of them equally. One does not detract from the other in any way. You know, sometimes it, you know, sometimes it works really well. Different versions. Sometimes it's you know not so good, but but it doesn't really matter. You get you get to enjoy your the thing you like more than once. Or maybe you don't about, enjoy the film version, or right? Maybe but, you don't. Maybe you don't. You know. You know. It's not. I, I think it's. Uh, I don't think it matters that a book isn't the same as a film. Yeah, they're two different no, mediums. Different mediums, and, and they have to understand that. It's like many. You know, it's like trying to make a film of a piece of art. Well. It really is a very different medium, isn't it? You, you're going to have to tell a longer story for one than what you see in a piece of art. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So in terms of Arnie films, um, yeah, I mean, Conan is there. I think, as you say, Predator, um, Judd, um, Terminator, uh, particularly Terminator 2 for me. Yeah, I, Terminator I really 2. I love that film. And I think I loved it because I got to see it without knowing that Arnie was the good guy in that one. Yeah, yeah. So that was a that was a twist for me. Whereas I think for most people, they'd already heard um, that that you know of that. No, sure. I really enjoyed his turn to comedy with things like Twins with Danny DeVito. Yeah, I think he did comedy really well, a bit he, like Tim yeah. Eastwood did. You know, he was this very starts off in these very well serious, as in he was a um, a, 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 a not a comedy role. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, it start to introduce these little one-liners and comments and things like in Terminator, which would be funny. And then he was able to sort of play that up in and bring that into the comedy because I, I don't know, it just has a sense of timing or or humor. The one that I didn't enjoy so much would be, um, uh, what's it called now? Last Action Hero. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. And I felt it was just kind of playing it for laughs too much i mean i haven't seen that since it came out like back in the 90s so i'd be interested to watch that again and just see if i think differently now i have uh, to agree with you on that one I, I i had the same kind of reaction i think and it was uh it was true lies that came out a year later that i kind of like yeah that that, that was great really enjoyed true lies jamie lee curtis and so on and i thought that was uh that was really cool and fun um but yeah, Lax Action Hero didn't really do it for me, I guess. So the third episode goes into his polit uh, political career, which I knew he was governor of California. Didn't really know much about what he did. No, same here. We don't really get, particularly in the UK, we we rarely know, even know who the governor is. It says it's not common knowledge in, in terms of naming governors of US states. So kind of aware that he was governor of California, but that was it. Didn't really hear about how he did. Didn't know, didn't know he got re-elected. Um, you know, that was all kind of news to me, I guess. And so I'm not quite sure on the pros and cons of what he did. Um, he was, uh, I believe he was a Republican, which, 
you know, not a great fan of, I guess, but I think he was, it seems through the program, it seems that he tried to be inclusive um, of uh, Democrats as well. I think it, it seems like the way they portray it is in his first year or two, he didn't do so well. Um, mm. he, his, his approach perhaps wasn't good. Uh, and then he took on a, um, like the, what they call it, like a head of staff. The, the chief of was, staff but was a prominent Democrat, I think. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one of the things he says is that I think I know best and I look at other politicians, you know, other people in my party, in the Republican Party, and they're saying they know what's best for people. But equally, I look at the other side, you know, the, the Democrats, and they're saying they know what's best for people. And, yeah, we can talk about corrupt politicians and <clears throat> you know, money grabbing and, and trying to create their own careers. But there's a lot of people on both sides, I I hope, I think, in most countries, on both political sides, that, that genuinely do want what's best, but they have different ideas of that. And as voters, you know, we probably fall on one side or the other. And I'm not sure the two side thing is a, is a good uh, a good way of framing it. But the important thing is is that they talk to each other. And they they yeah. try to work together and find some common ground because if you do want what's best, then you got to listen to other people. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what came across to me exactly the same kind of thing is that, that he, he reached a point where he needed to kind of realise that actually um, consensus and compromise and actually pulling in a range of different kind of voices and ideas might actually produce a, a more a better result. And so, you know, uh, certainly the way the documentary portrayed it was that, that you know, he, he took that on and um, and um, kind of turned his kind of political career around from from kind of low popularity after after as you say a year or two or something to getting reelected with a uh, with a, a greater kind of focus on just trying to trying to make things better for people and and, and bringing in different views and opinions and learning you know he talks a lot about learning and then listening to people uh even if their their views he doesn't necessarily agree with but learning from them and understanding you know people's points of view um which you know in in any kind of sense is never never a bad thing is it to uh to mm. kind of talk as you say that kind of uh everyone hopefully wants the same thing they just disagree on the ways to achieve it and sometimes uh or most of the time it's about um you know understanding each other and finding commonality that you can achieve something well good together um, rather than this kind of um constant bickering and fighting that really doesn't seem to produce anything and sometimes you think you know what you want and you order a bowl of gruel exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> and, and you know i still have visions of the bowl of gruel i mean how <laughs> I, I mean how also it was so massive what? It was huge. It was, huge. Like it a, a bowl. Must, it was a bucket. A bucket of gruel. And it was boiling hot. <laughs> it was literally bubbling as it arrived on the table. It was. And we were all sat there with our little plates of whatever it was, some sort of, you know, general, chicken and chicken and noodles chicken or, or something. something. General, general, someone was it? Oh, I don't. Yes, maybe some but, some some dish that I think is is quite well known in America. It, it's a shame to our none American of us friends. None of us thought to take a photo of the whole situation. Oh it, Christ! That that, that yeah. would that would be a, a trip down. Because I want then. to remember that. <laughs> Mainly your face when it arrived. <laughs> Marvelous. Well, in my head, I was going, "Oh, not again!" Dear, I did. But you know what? I, I, the um. So you, you mentioned about Terminator Two and um, not knowing Arnold was a good guy in in that particular film. Mm. So was it the same with Predator? I mean, I didn't know anything about Predator. Went to it with my mates on a Friday night when it opened, and it's Arnold running around with you know all these soldier types in the jungle. And yet, the very first shot is a, is a kind of a flying saucer going you know around the earth, and you go, "Oh, this looks good." I think that's unless I'm getting that confused. I don't remember. Maybe, maybe I can't. Get you know, I'm not, I'm not sure thing. I've ever seen it from the start. Oh wow. So we're just watching this thing in the jungle and they're going through this mission. And suddenly, like, things happen. You go like, oh, wow, this is not the film I thought it was. This mm. is even better. <laughs> and <at the> time, <laughs> like, fantastic, you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And also, well, it's, should... got the, it's got the immortal, probably one of the best lines of dialogue in any film, Predator, when uh, Conan's mate turns around to him and says, uh, I ain't got time to die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I ain't got time to die. Fantastic. And we haven't even mentioned Total Recall. Well, there you go. And so many others. but uh, Well, yeah. many, many, many others. <clears throat> Yes. But yes, I think we should indeed. probably draw it to a close there. Well, we can do. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe uh maybe we should have to go go and watch um The Eraser, which I think my son made me watch, which again was okay, but not I don't think one of his best. But anyway, anyway, I diverge. Let's uh, let's draw things to a close. So what how do we do that? Well, we talk about where people can find us. Amazing. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you so can find the, us. The, go on. Oh, you do then. I'll, I'll do then. it then. So you can find us at eldritchstories.com. Uh, and if you go there, you can subscribe uh, and you will get all of uh, all of our shows, all of our episodes direct to your, I don't know, direct, direct to your email. And, and well, and also this to say, is. The, the, the shows aren't just us talking about nonsense. There are we have, we have a, the other show that is part of the same feed where we actually you know uh, tell horror stories. Indeed. So tune in, subscribe, and you can hear myself and Mike reading short stories that we have written, especially for this uh, for this show for season one of uh, Mason and Fricker's Eldritch Stories. So. Don't forget to keep it eldritch.